Hey everyone and welcome! In my beginner guide I already gave you a quick overview of all the available specialists in Battlefield 2042. In today's video we're gonna dive deeper into their abilities and gadgets and I will give you some tips on how to use them. Even though the class system that all former Battlefield titles had with Assault, Engineer, Support and Recon is not existing anymore in Battlefield 2042, the specialists are still assigned to these four classes. But this is only to give them a category and not to limit their access to weapons and gadgets. In 2042, every specialist has access to all weapons and gear and you can set up your loadouts in every way you want to. Wanna play a Recon with SMG and ammo grade? Go for it. Or a Medic with Missile Launcher and Proximity Sensor? Why not? Combine it to whatever makes you happy and fits your playstyle. Each specialist comes with a unique specialty and trait and they are bound to this specific character. Right now there are 10 specialists available, 3 assaults, 2 supporter, 2 engineers and 3 recons and with each new season there will be one more specialist added to the game. Of the 10 we have right now there are 8 unlocked right from the start and 2 of them, Mackie and Pike, need to be unlocked by playing. For each specialist you can also unlock different skins by completing assignments and there are also masteries available that you can find over at the player card tab at Badges. Now let's start with Sundance as she is the first one in the specialist overview. Her assigned class is the Assault and she is the specialist with the wingsuit that you've seen in the gameplay trailer. When jumping from a building, a cliff or out of an aircraft and you press space on PC, A on Xbox or X on Playstation, she will start to fly with the wingsuit instead of opening a parachute. She also doesn't have a parachute at all, this is completely replaced by the wingsuit. It gives you the ability to fly much faster over the map and cross larger distances than the rest of the specialists. When airborne, you have full control of your flight's direction, speed and altitude, at least as much as possible with a wingsuit. With the W and S key or the left stick, you control your speed and with the mouse or the right stick, you control the direction. Pressing the W key or left stick forward, she will close the wingsuit to gather more speed, but that also means you will lose on altitude. By pressing S or left stick down, she opens the suit again, which slows her down but can also give you more altitude. Once you got the hang of it, you can easily cross the whole map just by switching between skydiving and gaining altitude. When you're too close to the ground, she will roll off from the flight, which makes it almost impossible to get any fall damage with her. Plus, the wingsuit can be opened much faster and earlier than the parachute, so you can even cross small gaps with it and use it to your advantage at flanks. Her specialty is called Smart Explosives, which means she is carrying three different types of grenades with her. The first one is the scatter grenade that bursts into four explosions scattered around the impact of the original grenade, dealing normal explosive damage to soldiers and vehicles. The second one is the anti-armor grenade that is thrown into the direction of a vehicle and that locks onto the target automatically. Once released, these grenades have a small booster with which they fly by themselves and follow it. Note that the target needs to be within a certain range, so when you have the grenade in your hand and point your crosshair at the target, they need to get a red dot above them. If you don't see a red dot, you are too far away. The third grenades are the EMP grenades and can be thrown to infantry or vehicles to irritate them and disable their HUD elements for a short amount of time. When thrown to a vehicle, turret or ranger, these grenades even disable all weapon systems. In addition, they deal a small amount of damage to soldiers standing close to them. To get access to the grenades, press 3 on PC or D-pad left on controller. To switch between the different types of grenades, press the button again. Once you use two of the grenades, no matter if it is of only one type or of two different types, you will have a short cooldown. Then you can use them again and they will also magically regrow in your pockets, so you don't have to resupply them at an ammo crate. Next up is Dozer, who is also assigned to the Assault class and is equipped with a Ballistic Shield. To equip it, press 3 or D-pad left and Dozer will hold the shield in front of him to protect himself or allies behind him from enemy fire and explosives. To completely hide behind the shield, you need to crouch, otherwise enemies can still see and shoot at your legs and feet. But holding the shield in front of you also means that you can't sprint anymore. You can only walk in normal speed and while crouching, you move even slower. So it's actually most useful to try to focus enemy fire on you or to force them to retreat, cause showing up with that shield always causes some sort of confusion within enemy lines. Note that the shield doesn't make you invincible, you will still take a small amount of damage behind it and you can also be shot from the side or in the back. But the shield itself can't be destroyed, so you don't need to worry about losing it and there's also no cooldown on its usage. When pressing the melee button or the trigger, you can also do a ram with the shield that deals damage to enemies. In addition, the shield deflects enemy bullets that can also deal damage, but only works on close range and is pretty random. So pointing your crosshair at the enemy who's shooting at you doesn't guarantee a hit. 
Also, turning with the shield is much slower than with a normal weapon, so enemies will quickly get behind you. Dozer's trait is called Blast Resistant and grants him extra resilience to explosive damage, no matter if it is from grenades or vehicles. That means he takes 50% less damage from them and also recovers much faster than any other specialist. The third one available in the Assault category is Mackey and he is also one of the specialists that need to be unlocked. After reaching level 15, you can start to play him. He is equipped with the grappling hook that fires a rope that attaches to surfaces, no matter if static or moving, and once attached, the rope is retracted and pulls you towards the attached point. After its use, you have to wait for a short amount of time until you can use the hook again. The cooldown is shown with a small semicircle inside your crosshair. When the hook is equipped, you can tell by the shape of the crosshair if the targeted surface is within the range of the grappling hook or not. If not, the crosshair is a wider rectangle, if you're close enough, it switches to a smaller rectangle and rotates 45 degrees. If you miss the attach point or there's something right in front of you that keeps you from getting pulled towards it, you won't have to wait for the cooldown to end. Instead, you will have another try immediately. The hook can be used to attach to almost all surfaces on buildings, vehicles, icebergs or rocks or to kill enemies. You can even pull yourself up to hovering drones and aircrafts with it, so it's a great tool to move faster across the map or to bring yourself into a better position during a gunfight. Mackie's trait is called Nimble, which increases his movement speed when aiming down sights, the agility and speed when ziplining, and also further enhances all speed-related advantages gained with weapon attachments. So he's definitely the perfect specialist if you are a more aggressive player. Next up is Boris, who is part of the Engineer class and is equipped with an SG-36 sentry gun. Once it is deployed, it observes the area and automatically spots and fires at enemies within a certain range. Detected enemies will not only appear as red dots on the minimap, but will also be 3D spotted, which means they get a red outline and are visible through walls. Boris only carries one turret and when placed, there is a long cooldown before you can place another one. To avoid this cooldown, you can pick up the turret when you don't need it anymore and place it somewhere else. This will immediately cancel the cooldown and make the turret available again. If you don't pick it up and you place a second turret after the cooldown, the first one will disappear, so you're not able to place multiple turrets. It will also disappear when you leave it at a spot and move too far away from it, so you can't just leave the turret on a captured objective to protect it from enemies. It is also removed from the map when you die. What you can't do as well, unfortunately, or maybe luckily, is placing the turret on top of a vehicle and drive around with it. But what you can do is place it on high ground, like on a roof, a hill or on a container, to make it harder for the enemy to break its line of sight. Also, the turret does not only fire horizontally, but also vertically and can shoot down to enemies or up to helicopters. Boris' trait is called Sentry Operator, which increases the reaction time and overall efficiency of the sentry gun when Boris is inside the green circle that appears around the turret. The second specialist of the engineers is Irish, who should be familiar to fans of the Battlefield series. His specialty is the fortification system that consists of two different gadgets. A deployable cover that can be placed at any spot to protect the person behind it from bullets and explosives, and a shoot-down sentinel that takes down explosive projectiles, so basically a trophy system. You can switch between the two items by pressing 3 or D-pad left and you can either place two covers or two sentinels or one type of either of the gadgets. Then a cooldown will start and you have to wait until you can deploy the next one. When you do this, the gadget that was placed first disappears. To avoid the cooldown, you can also pick both gadgets up if they are not needed anymore to be able to immediately use them again. Unlike Boris' sentry gun, the shield and sentinel will not disappear when you move away from them. Both items stay deployed until they are destroyed or replaced or until you die. Note that you need to crouch behind the cover to be completely safe from enemy bullets and explosives. When you stand up, you can shoot over it. Irish trait is called Veteran and it grants him 10 extra shield points when spawning on the map and for each enemy he kills, he recovers 5 shield points. Assists do not recover shield. Next up is the Recon Casper, who is equipped with an OVP drone that spots nearby targets and can also cause an EMP blast that completely disables the weapon systems of vehicles, aircrafts, turrets and rangers for a few seconds. This can be really helpful when your team is trying to engage an enemy tank or get away from their gunfire. It also works against Boris' sentry gun, the Robodog Ranger and other enemy drones. Simply fly closer to the target, press the aim down sight button to log onto it and then press the fire button to release the EMP blast. After each blast, there is a short cooldown before you can do the next one. In addition, you can spot enemy targets by pointing the crosshair at them, you don't even need to press a button. Just hover over an area and keep spotting them. Every spotted enemy that gets killed by one of your teammates counts as an assist for you. 
Note that the drone has to be piloted manually by the player and is not moving or following automatically. And you only have a limited range before losing the connection. But with the connection bar at the bottom of the screen, you will always see how good your connection is. And even if you fly out of the connection range, the drone will stay in the air and once you got close enough again, you can simply open the tablet and keep on flying. If you are up for some good fun, you can equip the drone with explosives and try to deal some damage yourself. Just fly into a tank or a heli with the explosive drone and the collision will cause it to explode. You don't have to switch back to the C5 control. Only if you want to blow up a group of infantry soldiers, you need to switch back and pull the trigger manually. What you can equip to the drone as well is an ammo or health box, at least it sticks to it. But unfortunately it doesn't seem to resupply or heal anyone, even though the circle around the box is showing. Maybe this will get added in a later update. If you have problems deploying the drone, you might be sitting in a corner or a bush and there's not enough space around you. So just take a step forward or stand up and it should work. Once the drone is deployed, you can get back to safety and try to hide your specialist. Casper's trait is called Movement Sensor and is built into his uniform. The sensor appears as a small pulsing circle at the bottom of the screen and turns red when enemies are nearby. The more enemies are around you, the faster it will pulse and the more circles will appear. It is also shown and working while piloting the drone. So when you're in drone mode and the circle at the bottom of the screen turns red, you should switch to your specialist and take care of the enemies before they find you. The second available recon is Rao, who is wearing a complete cyber warfare suit with a built-in hacking device. It gives you the ability to disable the weapon systems of vehicles, aircraft, turrets and robot dogs just like Casper's EMP blast. But the hack lasts much longer and the range of the suit is larger. The disadvantage is that it also takes much longer to disable the targets and you can't stay in a safe place to do it. Instead, the targets have to be in your line of sight. So when a tank is driving behind cover for example, the warfare suit is losing connection to it and the action will be cancelled. An advantage on the other hand is that smoke does not break your line of sight and you can also keep on hacking a vehicle that is trying to hide behind a smoke barrier. Plus, the suit only has a very short cooldown, so if you are in a good spot you can constantly hack tanks and helicopters around you and can keep your team safe from their attacks. To use the built-in device, just switch over to the specialist gadget and look around you. The crosshair will change to yellow if there's anything within your range that you can hack. No matter if it is a bridge that you can lower or lift from distance or a door that can be opened remotely or the aforementioned vehicles. In addition, Rao can also hack enemy soldiers with his trade Trojan Network. But just like vehicles, the soldiers need to be in your line of sight. Once a hacked soldier is killed, either by yourself or a teammate, all enemies around it get revealed for a short time as well. The spotted soldiers will be marked on the minimap and get a red outline that is visible through walls, similar to the effect of Boris turret. Every spotted soldier that gets killed by a teammate counts as an assist for you. And then there's Pike, the third available recon and another specialist with an ability that spots enemies through walls. She has to be unlocked at level 25 that you should reach within a few hours of playtime and is equipped with an EMGX scanner. This scanner has only a short effective radius but it will spot all enemies around you no matter if they are in plain sight or hiding behind a wall or if they are above or below you. So when fighting in buildings or between containers this specialty is a massive advantage. Pike even gives you a short feedback if there was an enemy spotted around you or not. Unfortunately, it only works for a very short time and then there is a long cooldown before you can use it again. All spotted enemies are marked as red dots on the minimap and are also outlined and every marked enemy that gets killed counts as an assist for you as well. Pike's trait is called Threat Perception and gives her the ability to automatically spot enemies that deal damage to you, no matter if they are in front of you or behind you. The only question is, will you or one of your teammates be fast enough to kill them before they kill you? Now let's head over to the two last specialists, which are the two supporter. One of them is Falk, who is equipped with a Zoret pistol with which she can fire up to 12 syringes at teammates to heal them or to heal herself. Just point the crosshair at a teammate and pull the trigger. When you hit them successfully, you will get a short audio feedback. One syringe is enough to fully heal up your teammate, but the regeneration works slowly and over time, so don't shoot out all of your syringes because you think they are not working. Shooting more than one syringe at a teammate will only speed up the regeneration process a little bit. After six syringes are fired, the pistol needs to be reloaded like a normal weapon and when all 12 syringes are used, you can resupply them on a medic crate. Note that resupplying the Surrette pistol has a cooldown, so you can't just stand next to a crate, fire out the syringes and quickly reload again. If you miss your target with the syringe, no worries, they are not lost. The syringe stays on the ground and can be picked up and used by any player, no matter if friend or foe. But you need to find them in the moment you are wounded as you can't store them. But if you find one, just walk over it and your soldier will get healed automatically. 
So they basically work like the health pouches that have been available in former titles. That also works for Falk herself. If you find that the self-healing animation that you can trigger by holding 3 or D-pad left takes too much time, just shoot the syringe to the ground and walk over it. When fired at an enemy, the syringe will deal damage instead, which is quite a fun gadget or comes in handy if you run out of bullets. Her trait is called Combat Surgeon and allows her to revive all squad and teammates with full health. You simply need to hold your interact button to do it, which is E on PC, Square on PlayStation and X on Xbox. And the last specialist and also part of the support class is Angel, who is equipped with a resupply box and can call in a loadout crate. With the resupply box he can throw a pouch that is a combination of ammo and shields. It will completely fill up your ammo and give you 20 shield points without having to equip the shields manually. If your mates don't need resupply at the moment, the pouches stay on the ground until someone picks them up. Just select the supply box from your inventory with 3 and D-pad left and you can throw up to 3 pouches in a row directly to your teammates or drop them to the ground. When 3 of the pouches are thrown, there's a short cooldown and then you can throw the next packages. In addition, he can also call in a loadout crate that allows you and your teammates to switch to another one of your preset loadouts while on the map. While having the supply box equipped, you need to press the aim down sights button to mark a location for the drop, then confirm it with the trigger button. The loadout crate can be used multiple times by different teammates as well as by the same teammates. So when an enemy sniper is getting annoying but you are equipped with an SMG, you can quickly switch to your sniper loadout, get rid of the enemy and then switch back to your SMG loadout. Not sure if that's intended but it works. And there's not even a cooldown for the loadout crate, you can call in the second one right after the first one. Only that the first one will disappear once the second has landed. Angel's trait is called Trauma Specialist and just like Falk's ability, it allows him to revive all of his allies with full health. But in addition, he also fills up their armor to 20 points. And that's it for today. I hope this video gave you a good overview of all the available classes of Battlefield 2042 and if it did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.